Bonjour. Um, bonjour, mon nom est Michel Bluma. Uh, I'm again switching to the wrong language, sorry. My name is Michel Bluma. Um, I'm used to doing these in French in Montreal. Um, so today, uh, we're only going to be skimming the surface of how to prepare, think about our content that is not posts and not pages. Um, anything else would probably be something that we want to plan in advance and that we want to um, just think about to save time down the road because any decision we make will impact many aspects of our projects. It's going to impact the wireframe aspect, it's going to impact the design because all of these properties have to be applied and shown on the page itself. It's going to be um, impacting page templates because as you can imagine, you probably want a, speci a special template to display the special data. Um, it's going to affect all sorts of parts, including also uh, thinking maybe of your um, web content people, the webmasters, because you want to make sure that it's easy for them to work and enter this data. And also, uh, one of my rules is that the other than strong and italic, you should never have to write any HTML as a web content person. If not, it's that your back end has probably not been prepared accordingly to the project that you're working on. Um, so what are we dealing with is the first thing you're going to be thinking about. Uh, it could be anything because, uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about custom post types, but it's, just, it's more of a concept than having to think about WordPress itself. This will apply to any web project, whether you're using WordPress or not. Um, this is sort of the catalog of objects, of entities that you will be presenting. What is it? Is it a book? Is it a recipe? Is it, um, it, could, it doesn't have to be a physical object either. Uh, you could be selling ebooks, tutorials, MP3s. It could be anything. So that would be sort of like our, um, sorry, I'm not used to this microphone. Uh, it would be used, it would be like the base. Think of it as your archive pages. Think of it as the singles of book. So like, yep. Um, once we figure that out, uh, what we're going to start thinking about is two main things. There are other uh, considerations, but the two main things you want to think about is how are we going to sort this information and how are we going to filter it? Um, think about, again, just to take a random example, because I have not been thinking about books at all, um, how would we sort books? Uh, do we care about sorting by ISBN number? Probably not, but we might be thinking about how to sort uh, by author, but also by date of publication. Um, if you were to enter this data into like the, let's call it dumb content, not that it's dumb, it's that it's not useful for any queries. Um, if you put it within a paragraph, it's going to be a horrible experience to try to sort it by that. So you want to think about, okay, let's make a special field just for our author. But once you do that, um, let's say I had three books and my name is Michelle Bluma, um, chances are you don't want to sort by my first name. So that's another consideration. How do we break down, break down this information to make it easy to display, catalog, query, sort? and also filter. So uh, you could go with Bluma, comma, Michelle, but still chances are that it's going to be even easier down the road if you just break it down into two fields. So considerations uh, that you might have about sorting. For filtering, um, again, just to take a random example, a book, uh, you might want to filter by fiction, nonfiction, uh, biographies. Uh, all of these are probably going to be set up as taxonomies, but how you do it is not really important today. It's just planning to do it, because any of these steps might involve back-end code. And that one little bullet point in your project description when you're talking with your customer could end up being a 20-hour job, just a part of your project. And that's not something that's really fun to discover when you're at 65% completion, and of course, 95% budget. It's not really great to realize, oh, zut, um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to have to uh, pay a subcontractor to do this, and it's going to really cut into my profit margin. So what we're going to start doing is just thinking about things. That's all. Today, that's all I'm talking about is thinking about anything. You can look around you. Anything that you're looking at is an object, an entity, and not to objectify anyone, it's really more that if you're looking at people and you see their lanyards, 
you can just think to yourself, what is this? What is this lanyard? So it's a piece of cardboard. It is uh, square. It's not really heavy. Most of these properties are uninteresting and useless. But some of them, um, mine is an X-Men one. I know you guys all seem to have a blue one. I don't know where you got yours. Um, those would be two products, and you would want to see how do I separate those, or how do I make it easy for the visitor to, as quickly as possible, get the information they have and um, do exactly what they need to get to that. Um, as you can see, all sorts of examples, some seem dumb, but the thing is, when you're thinking about this, when you're in this process, don't try to be smart. What I mean by that is don't easily dismiss stuff. Um, earlier, I was talking about the ISBN number on a book, right? Um, if you don't know, it's just a way to internationally catalog books, and I'm not going to say more because I'm probably going to make a mistake. Um, that is not useful for your visitor. It is honestly not useful for your designer because they're just going to, like, even if you show it, there, it's just going to be an, a quick echo, and that's it. However, um, let's say that the, your customer is like, oh, you know what? I would really like to um, tie into Amazon's API for this. Well, the ISBN is probably a great uh, unique identifier, and it won't have anything to do with your development or what you thought you needed to build the site. But tying into this external API might be two, five, 10, again, 20 hours of development time. Probably not 20, um, but just to give you an example of things that, can, that you don't think about necessarily in the beginning that might end up taking a lot of time um, and of, uh, chunks of your budget. So that is the part about the little properties. Of course, this will also impact the web content, the entry. Uh, I'm not going to go into how we enter this information, but as you can imagine, there are ways to make it a lot easier, again, for your web content person to enter them, uh, classify them, and make it just pleasant for everyone. I was uh, a little scared of running over Board or over my time. I guess I'm not going to be, so this is going to go real quick. Um, just today, if you can, when you're walking around, like I was saying, just look at stuff and just try to think about it. And it'll seem like it's a futile, sort of boring thing to do, but after a while, all of this just comes to you naturally, and it'll be super easy when you're planning, estimating, and preparing your project. I don't have a Q&A, but I... Uh, Hey, a random example, we have a book. Or rather, it would probably be a book publisher, so it would be a collection of books. This is a collection of things that we're talking about, right? Um, so what is a book? Actually, I'll, um, can anyone name properties of a book? Numbers of page, Numbers of page excellent. Paper. Language, paper, title. That is a very useful one, usually. <laughs> Very good, very good. I'm also the robot. Um, which of these publishing. you're publishing, and that is important because we're probably going to want to look at books chronologically, and perhaps not the way you think. It might not be on the show us all books page. It might be because you also entered authors as a piece of information, probably taxonomy or custom field. Um, and on their page, you probably want to show their uh, bibliography. Uh, chronologically descending. I don't know if you've ever tried to sort information when it's like a, a random date within a piece of content. It, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work well. What you want is, first of all, a date entry field for your webmaster or web content person. Uh, you will want um, to prepare queries, so that's for your back-end person. Um, and all of this, if you've prepared it, it's super quick to do. But not at the last minute when like, uh, we should have thought of that first. Um, the paper or binding, chances are that it's not really going to be useful. And I thought of those, and I thought they're great. Because sometimes if you are like a prestige publisher, if you're McSweeney's or something, it's actually information you might want to present. Um, but you probably won't be filtering by, you know, I, I really would like a Stephen King novel, but only if it's on a beige stock, otherwise, no. So it's, all of this comes with, you just start realizing 
what is useful, what is not, and once you do that, you've planned, uh, you've planned it out. So as I was saying, I don't actually have a Q&A. Uh, what I would like to offer you, though, is if ever you see me in the hallway track, which is uh, anywhere here other than the three uh, places, come see me. And if you want, we can just try to map something out on paper real quick. Because yes, the main tools you will need, I know it's, it's really expensive, but you will need a piece of paper and a pencil or pen. That's about it, because all of this is just done really free-flowing, but then ah, all your meetings are going to be so much easier to get through. Um, does anyone have any questions? I will prepare a Q&A just for you. Any question at all? I know, you're all waiting for Catherine. She's, she always gives amazing talks. I get it. It's fine. I'm just the opening act. Um, so, well, in that case, thank you very much, and really, I, I mean this, it's not just to be polite or something. Come see me, I'll gladly look at this stuff with you. Thank you very much.